Every single day, hundreds of kids and adults alike pick up a transmitter for the first time, and they just crash into buildings, trees, and even crowds. It really leaves all of us wondering, why? Why didn't they just ask for help? Well, after months of endless research in the Silviation Lab, Ben, our awesome lead editor and kick-ass pilot, and myself, I guess I should mention my name is Zach, have come to the conclusion that people aren't heading to the RC fields for training night simply because they don't know what to expect. Let's face it, sometimes the unexpected things in life can be terrifying. So, in a desperate attempt to save RC pilots' egos like Scott's, we put together a guide on what to expect when you're expecting to fly RC. First things first, crashing. <laughs> it's just too entertaining to not start with this one. Endless crashes make for great entertainment at any RC flying site. Well, so long as it's not your own plane crashing. Many things can lead to them occurring at higher rates than rumors circulating about your ex-girlfriend. So let's get into those few causes of crashes that stick out to us. Imagine being that guy who takes off with your flight controls going the wrong way. Nope. As it turns out, those things really are important to check before taking off, by the way. Or that guy who yells LOWER at you from the pits, where your ego gets put to the test and, well, ultimately, you're left more destroyed than the toilet after hitting up your local Taco Bell as your plane obliterates into a million pieces. Or finally, getting a little too slow when on your final approach to land and stall spinning into the ground, among, well, many other causes for crashes as well, for being honest. While crashing can definitely not be as fun if it's your own plane, it actually has its upsides if that's believable or not. Take myself and Ben, for example. We love to fly what's referred to as stole, short takeoff and landing, airplanes. But in places and ways that you wouldn't normally consider flying, such as a random hallway of trees in the back of a corner of a small park or on the bed of a dude's pickup truck. We have absolutely had our own fair share of crashes in high numbers when attempting these things. Oh no, my elevator. But what we've learned is that the crashes ultimately teach you a lot more about flying and what you should do to avoid the crash. And for the Karens out there that will try and reply to that statement with, well, don't fly into a hallway of trees, you idiot. It's dangerous. We simply want to respond with, when was the last time you tried anything other than touch and goes at your field? <laughs> Pardon the brashness, but the fun goes away in this hobby if you take flying too seriously and don't push yourself. We're not implying elitism here. We're saying that having fun doing new things in aviation without letting egos get in the way is what's most important. There's a lot of places to experience RC flying. That's what the next topic we're going to dive into is, the types of RC fields you'll fly at. The most common, at least before the FAA takes over in 2023, which we'll probably discuss that in a later video, location most people fly at is public parks. They're easy to go to, less intimidating, since you don't have to fly in front of people who are better than you, and with no official rules, it makes it more relaxing for a lot of folks. That is, until you have a team of six-year-olds approach you and start begging you for the controller and asking if you can fly it while you can't figure out which way your airplane's going, or a group of people asking an endless list of questions you always get asked about while flying RC, and we'll definitely cover those in a later video. Does it blow up if it crashes? The other most common is simply the opposite, flying in an officially sanctioned radio control airfield. While being the new guy at an official flying site, commonly referred to as a club, can be no better than being the new guy at high school who transferred from out of state, you'll quickly get a sense of community right away. And community is definitely one of the great things about official RC fields. Everyone is there to support each other and keep each other flying. Forget a tool? No problem. Brian over there probably has one. Break a prop? Bet that guy over there who landed his plane like a bag of hammers hitting the concrete has one as well. Need help learning to fly RC? Sanctioned RC fields are great for that. And on a serious note, 99% of the folks at an RC field are quick and happy to help. The other fun part of these fields are the different types of clubs there are. There's clubs tailored specifically to radio control gliders, a plane without a motor. But don't get caught with a powered airplane there, because they'll quickly yell you off their lawn quicker than Dwight yelled for Michael in the office. Michael! Oh, that's funny. Michael! Kidding, but mostly. Not. I don't know. There are also clubs meant specifically for flying first-person view aircraft, think U.S. military drone, but less killing people. There's even clubs for flying radio control helicopters. Heck, I mean, there's even some clubs that mix all of these into one, which, if we're being honest, is really what most clubs are. But by doing so, they even include fun contests as well that combine all the different flying types. These can range from anything such as trying to do as many loops in one minute, up through simulating a real airplane's aerobatic sequence, and being judged meticulously by people with nothing better to do on a Sunday afternoon. I digress. I'd say the most fun and common contest out there is crashing related, which as we're finding is the most fun thing out there anyway, and that's combat flying. Think of a beehive of airplanes in the air, all flying with the same common goal, hit each other directly, and the last one flying wins. Each child hit is an extra five points. Ultimately, if you're going to get into flying, flying at a park up through a luxurious SoCal private RC field can fit most any RC pilot's wishes. It really just depends on what you want out of a site. On the subject of most any RC pilots, there are many different types of RC pilots you'll run into. We had trouble getting the list of these down to a short list, but we'll do our best here and hope you like them. Let's jump right into the gate here with the all money and no skill pilot. 
These hog washers are known for showing up to the field in their 2043 luxury vehicle, pulling out a giant scale warbird with well over ten dollars to $20,000 invested in it, only to taxi out to the runway, attempt to take off and throw off the side. Always remember, often the coolest flying aircraft are pretty terrible to start out with. Another common pilot you'll likely meet is a scratch builder. Generally, these are folks who enjoy building more than flying, but in some cases, they enjoy them both equally and will show up with a really unique airplanes that you'd have never really thought of before or even pictured in your mind, and they make them fly in pretty awesome ways. This is a huge facet of the radio control hobby, and it's definitely something we'll be exploring more of on our channel. Stemming off the scratch builder pilot type goes into two of our most favorite stereotypes of RC pilots, which is the armchair engineer or the armchair NTSB investigator. That one guy at your field who always walks up to someone who's about to fly their beautiful scratch-built plane for the first time and tells them why their airplane won't fly. Just please, don't, don't be that guy. As further insult to injury, imagine just having crashed your beautiful, expensive warbird and some armchair NTSB investigator comes up and tells you what you did wrong to cause the crash in the first place. See what we're getting at here? Just don't be that guy. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of awesome guys at the fields we fly at regularly. We'll get to those, but there's one final other negative stereotype to cover. The d measuring pilot. This is honestly the most common out of any facet of aviation, whether it be real airplanes, referred to by us RC folk as full scale. Now you just sit here and, and watch how I fly this plane. Or radio control. We feel this one doesn't really even need an explanation. Just don't be that guy. Don't dick measure, please. Moving on to the big positives in RC flying and what's kept people like myself and Ben involved in it since we were small enough to fit in the overhead compartment in an airliner, we're talking about the dopamine rush. We all know what it's like to get gifts from grandma on Christmas that aren't socks, and RC flying does the same, although with a much longer lasting positive effect than the dopamine would give you. Imagine getting into this hobby, as many of you who watch this video hopefully will, learning how to fly your $500 piece of foam successfully and taking that first flight all by yourself without the umbilical cord attached. It's a pretty great feeling. It's what keeps everyone yearning for more. Maybe even more airplanes in their wife's garage that was already full, but hey honey, I actually got this one for free from a friend. Right. Right. Now take that experience and combine it with a scratch-built airplane. Imagine building a plane from literal scrap foam and flying it. Your own design especially. That's honestly a feeling even Bill Gates after getting divorced and losing half his net worth couldn't buy you. And another fun one, when that guy in the pits yells LOWER at you when you're doing a pass already in an altitude below your comfort zone and you go lower anyway because pure pressure works, right? Now picture yourself going so low that the belly of your plane bounces off the grass runway and you continue flying. Can't beat that, literally. I mean, you can only tie that record, right? Another feeling better than finding out grandma's inheritance is all yours is spreading some butter all over the runway for your next greaser landing. Overall, RC flying is incredibly rewarding, and with every flight and crash comes benefits and good vibes all around. It's better than a dopamine loop, we promise. The final point we wanted to touch on is the lingo. Language. The talk. We all know it. Every hobby has it. Hundreds of acronyms that are bounced around as though they are common English words. But don't worry. We were a bit intimidated by these two when we first got into it, but you'll figure it out. Most of the time, you'll hear words like transmitter, receiver, which are two fancy things that talk wirelessly and tell your plane what to do by way of inputs from your fingertips. You'll hear people talking about tip stalls, blaming their crashes on them, or saying it was the wind, or I lost control. Tip stalls are a commonly misused term, by the way. Let's quickly discuss that with our lead aero engineer here at Silviation Lab. Austin. Don't worry, he's not an armchair engineer. He's genuinely the real deal. All right, Woody, tell us what's actually happening when the wing drops on short final. Is it a tip stall? Angle of attack. If part of the wing stalled, it's because that part of the wing got too much angle of attack on that part of the wing. Also, WTH is a tip stall. Thanks, Austin. And back to the lingo. You'll hear folks talking about brownouts, uh, aka losing signal and watching hopelessly as your $3,000 giant scale aerobatic plane crashes into a field straight down and just obliterates itself. Never fun, unless you're the spectator. But actually though, brownouts are simply when the receiver voltage drops below what it should be, which results in a loss of signal. This is another commonly misused term, but again, I digress. The most common lingo is going to be lingo about aerobatics. There's this fancy flying called 3D flying, where you fly the airplane beyond where it's stalled. In other words, the wing isn't even doing the work anymore to keep the airplane in the air its excess thrust from the prop or the jet, that has hundreds of weird maneuvers with names you've never heard of before. Pop tops, blenders, torque rolls, lam shabak. What even are these? Like a mail order bride's name? Items from your kitchen? Never fear though, because with time you'll quickly pick up on the lingo and be ready to pull up next to your buddy while he's flying and ask him to waterfall his airplane, and it probably won't actually sound weird to you anymore. Overall, the RC aviation hobby is one of the most fun hobbies you can get into if you're interested in aviation. And even if you're not really, you may find that you have that bug. It's far cheaper than full-scale aviation. It's easier to access and meet people because there's not fences with armed guards around the entire airfield. And you can crash without being on the receiving end of calls from the NTSB. Truly, we've met some of our best friends in the hobby and made memories that'll last a lifetime. 
We get it. It sounds cliche. So if you're interested in RC, go ahead and give it a shot. Plenty of fields out there offer free training nights. So all this holding you back is clicking on our video description, going to the AMA link, uh, more acronyms, which takes you to an awesome tool to find local RC clubs near you and join the AMA, which seriously, it's an awesome organization and it'll give you over a million dollars in liability insurance in case something happens. Definitely worth it. Anyways, that's all we have for this video. If you've watched this video this far, then I think it's fair to say you've enjoyed it. And since you've enjoyed it, we gotta do that thing and ask you to hit that like button, or maybe even click that red subscribe button. Turn on alerts. It helps us out a ton. In any case, thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you later. Next year. Maybe.